My name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix the Zanussi dishwasher. The model number is ZDT41 and the problem with it is every time it's plugged in it trips the RCD in the main consumer board, in the fuse board. So basically yeah, rather than keep on tripping the fuse board I've plugged in this little circuit breaker here and every time I plug, it, every time I plug in the dishwasher to it there you go, you see, it trips the switch. Set that, plug it in. There, okay. So uh, I'm going to take it apart and see what's wrong with it. Make sure you turn the water off to the dishwasher as well. So that's that little tap down here. Okay, so on the multimeter down here, when I touch the two leads together, you can see the needle going across. And if I go between, on the plug, if I go between the earth and the live, you can see that the needle jumps across. So if I go between earth and neutral, there's nothing. If I go between live and neutral, nothing. But live and earth, the needle jumps across. Not completely, but... Uh, that looks like there's some water or there's, some, there's something getting into the electronics somewhere which is causing that to happen and that's what the RCD is picking up in the, uh, in the fuse board and that's, what's, uh, that's why it's tripping. So we're going to pull the dishwasher out, take it apart and see if I can see anything obvious. Okay, I'm going to take off the cupboard front here so it doesn't get damaged and also I've removed the plinth from down below. To take off the, the cover plate you need to undo this screw here and these two down here and also the same on the other side so this one here and these two down here you right so now that is removed and all we've got to do now is just empty it out now rather than taking out all the dishes individually I'm just going to take out all of these bits here to remove them just flip open this bit here because that's to stop it from coming out too far so just flip that open there and there's another one over on the other side here now to put it out we just need to loosen up these screws that's attaching it up here to the worktop and also the side of the cabinet and this one here there is no side so there's just one screw holding it up on the worktop. Right and now those screws are undone the whole dishwasher just pulls out. Okay, so I'm just taking off this bottom plate here. It was held in by three screws. One, two, three this side. And another three screws on this side. One, two, and three. And this bottom section should just unclip out. Like so. Okay, so I've put my leads back on the plug again just to make sure that it's still got the short, which it has. And what I've been doing is I've just randomly been pulling off the wires just to see if the needle drops back to zero and uh, when I go to these wires here the needle does actually drop back so if I pull off for example this brown one here then if you have a look can you see the needles drop back but yet when I touch when I touch it so I'm touching it now can you see the needles shooting across so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and see if I can take off the side panel and then try to trace trace where this goes to because there's just two little screws up here one here one down the bottom here and one down the very bottom which is here and then the whole panel just lifts off okay so the sides off now and I want access to here so you need to undo this little retaining screw here and then this unit pops out by going up and out. Okay so I've loosened these little clips that hold the pipe in place and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the pipe off to drain the water out and I want to see if the needle if the needle moves so at the moment it's still showing the short between earth and live. So I've got my saucepan down here to catch the water okay and straight away there you see that the needle has dropped down I'm just going to drain all the water out. They're actually called pressure switches and what happens is as the dishwasher fills with water, 
water goes into the sump and then it forces air up the pipe here and then when the air when this switch here senses the air it knows that the sump is full and uh, it knows to, to, to stop the water. So right this is the pressure switch that I've actually taken apart and I was expecting to see water inside here but it's completely bone dry and it's working as it should do so when you blow into this bit here this bit moves out like so and in doing that it presses that which makes the contact so uh, I thought there was going to be water in here which was what was going to be causing the earth fall but this is all dry so I'm very confident now that it's not the pressure switch at fault. Right I'm getting really involved in this now so I've uh, wired up the pressure switch again I've still got it connected up to the meter and the plug on the, the live and the neutral and when I uh, suck into this you can hear it clicking and the needle still going across between live and live and earth but as you've seen already we've taken this apart and it all looks good in there so I've been tracing the wires and the two grey wires go off to the heater element which is all the way in there and it looks quite rusty you see the grey wires just going in on the top there so I'm, I'm gonna when I unplug the grey wires the grey wires here you can see there's an awful lot of corrosion on it and now when I blow into the switch nothing's happening so I'm going to take out the heater element and see uh, see if I can see anything obvious on that okay so I need to tip the dishwasher on its side so I can get to the water heater by taking off this bottom panel here so what I've done is I'm still the water will still come out of the machine but I've got as much of the water out as possible by just using a cloth and squeezing it into the saucepan and I've also done this bit here so I've got as much of the water out as possible into here just to uh, minimize the mess when I tip it on its side right the machine is now on its side and I just need to take off this panel at the bottom so first of all just unclip this little adjuster for the back leg that just pulls out and then you've got a series of clips there's no screws it just all push fits in and clips into place right so that's unclipped now and now I want to get access to this heater down here as you can see I can see that there's a lot of corrosion on it so I'll take it out and see if I can see anything wrong with it I'm going to have to undo these clips here so I'm just using some mole grips I'll just move the clips up off the pipe there and I'm also going to have to get to the other one down there and it looks like there's an earth wire connected to here as well Okay, so I managed to get the water heater out. It don't look too great. It looks very corroded. So I'm going to do a few tests on this and see if I can see if this is where it's leaking from uh, live to earth. Right, so just a very quick look at it and I can see that if I put one lead to earth and then touch either of the contacts here, I can see the needles going across. So these contacts here are in contact with earth and I think that's what my problem is okay so I ordered up a new water heater and here it is a few days later it's uh, it cost me 21 pound it's not the original part but it looks okay we'll give it a go see how long it lasts hopefully it might last a year or two maybe longer so now if I put one lead to earth and you can see if I tap them together the needle there we go the needles shooting across again and now if I put one to earth and it, when I touch both contacts here the needle's not moving so I know that the old water heater was definitely faulty so I'm going to fit this in place of the old one and hopefully the dishwasher will work again right so I need to clip the new one on if you have a look on this pipe here there is actually a cutout in the pipe because this bit sticks out here so that's where the pipe locates on there I 
get my mole grips. Right, when I tried to fit it, I had problems because this earth wire wasn't stretching over to this terminal on this side. So it looks like I must have taken the earth terminal off this end here because we've got another earth terminal here. So I'm going to put it this side and then it will stretch. I couldn't remember if I took it off this side or this side, but it actually comes off the same side that uh, the power cables go into it. Now we've got to connect up the pipe on the other side. Again, getting the mole grips and moving this clamp round to the end of the pipe. I want to make sure that that pipe's fully down because I don't want it to come loose and start leaking. There we go. Right, so that's on there. The bottom one looks in, and then there's a little locating tab that just on the rubber pipe that fits into this plastic, this grey plastic bit here. It just fits in there like so. Okay. Now let me just take the camera off and show you closely. Okay, so we've got the clamp at the bottom there. It's in the locating tab there. And the top clamp's on here. Right now we just need to close everything up and put it back together, which, like most things, is just a reverse of what we did before. Before I push it all back into its place and put the plinths on, I'm just going to do that quick test again where I'm going to throw a saucepan of water in and see if the needle goes across from earth and live. So I've got my cables on the plug there. At the moment it's not showing anything. So I'm just going to get a saucepan of water now and throw it in there. Here for the click on the pressure switch and then see if the needle jumps across. Right, so I've got my saucepan of water. I'm going to listen out for the click. Well, I'm not sure if I heard a click there or not, so I'm going to get some more water. Okay, I'm going to put some more in. There you go, I heard it click. You might not have heard that on the camera, but I definitely heard it click from this area here. And my needle hasn't gone across. So I've got my lead still connected to the plug and it hasn't gone across. So I'm really confident now that it was this water heater that was faulty. Okay, just before you push it back, make sure it's nice and level. So if you want to adjust it this way, obviously you've got feet here that you can screw in and screw out. And if you want to adjust it this way, then if you have a look down here, that's where this little screw comes in for the back leg. And if you have a look here, you've got an arrow going up. So if you turn it clockwise, the back of the dishwasher is going to go up. If you turn it anti-clockwise, the back of the dishwasher is going to go down. Nearly there, just got to put this plinth back on. Now, if you're missing any of these clips, have a look on the actual leg, because often when you take them off, they leave their clips on the leg. And they just slot in, there's a little, little groove there that they just slot into. Okay, so... There we go. Right, so that's the plinth back on. Turn it on and turn the tap back on. So that's the tap back on there. 
turn it on there. Red on so it's not tripping now. Right, there's hardly any dishes in there because they've all been done by hand for the past few days. So, turning it on. Looks like I need to add some salt to it. Put it on the 65. Close it and see what happens. Right, it's making the right sounds. Now I suppose it will have to drain a bit because remember I poured a saucepan of water in there. Right, rather than you have to sit here listening to this, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just film it, but I'll fast forward the video until it gets more into the cycle. Right, well it definitely seems to be okay at the moment. What I'll do is I'm going to cut the video now and then I'll film at the very end just to make sure it's nice and hot and that there's hot steam in there coming out. Okay, so the cycle's finished. The alarm went off a few minutes ago and now I can feel, I can feel the heat in there. Okay, or oh, you can see it's actually conden getting condensation on the lens. So uh, yeah, that's it. It's, it's worked. So the fault ended up being this water heater. So hopefully that's going to help some of you out out there if you're having the same problem. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more how-to videos. Okay, that's it. Take care. Bye now.